I can't remember the last time the President of the Republic of Kenya called a press conference on a Sunday, tenor a Sunday afternoon, if ever. But that is precisely what has happened today, Sunday 15th March 2020. And the purpose of that presser, apart from announcing two more cases, was basically to place the country on a lockdown. What? Unprecedented in Kenyan history. Day schools, both primary and secondary, are to cease operations tomorrow, Monday 16th March. And those in boarding schools are supposed to be home by Wednesday 18th March. Other institutions of learning like universities have up to Friday 20th March to wind up and shut down. On our show today, I want us to analyze the possible impact going forward now that Kenya has joined many other nations on a lockdown. And of course, before I forget, the other significant announcement here that came in from the president is that Kenya has now banned entry yeah, of any foreigners from countries that have reported cases. Actually, when you think about it, that is the banning of entry of any foreigners into the country. Yeah, because which country has not reported cases? <laughs> Very few less significant countries. That is the reality. There are those who may feel that this is overreaction. Yeah, but I'm not one of them. Because I've always believed it is better to be overcautious than to end up being sorry. Granted, our healthcare system is better than that of most African countries. Yeah, but still, nothing to write home about. And indeed, it is not capable yeah, of handling a major outbreak. And so, we need to appreciate the fact that although Although this must have been a difficult decision to make, it is the right one. Now, the worry in a vast majority of Kenyans, as you must have guessed by now, is money. Kenya is a country of casual laborers and contract workers. And even those who claim to be employed, many of them work in conditions that are very similar those of casual workers. And by the way, government departments, companies and businesses have been advised to encourage most of their workers to work from home, apart from those involved in essential and critical areas of running the show. What all this means is that although some students who don't like school <laughs> will be celebrating tonight. The truth is, a vast majority of parents will not be able to sleep easy tonight. And I'm guessing their worry will not even be the reason for the lockdown in the first place. Their worry will be money. How to sustain their families. How to sustain their lives. Over what we have been told is an indefinite period. We have many people in our country who heavily rely on crowded places and gatherings to earn a living. I'm talking about hawkers, newspaper vendors, those who work in restaurants and bars and entertainment spots, etc., etc. Even pickpockets. <laughs> And then we have the Kenyans who own companies and businesses. Owners of Matatus, for instance, here yeah, who've taken out a loan and they need to service this loan on a daily basis. And what the lockdown announced today means is less travel, yeah, less clients, less customers for them. Bottom line, my fellow Kenyans, tomorrow you wake up to a very different country. And although Kenyans have a history 
or being very tough guys, able to adapt and grapple with challenges, this challenge will be a difficult one. And I don't think Kenyans will feel any better when they realize even those who run government, yeah, and the government indeed, will also have a sleepless night tonight. Because there will definitely be an impact on revenue collection right across the board. Yeah, and governments, including county governments, need revenue to run. And indeed, these governments need money so that they are able to pay salaries at the end of this month. A challenge that even business owners will face. Oh yes, Kenya, you wake up tomorrow morning to a very different country. Now on the positive side, yeah, many Kenyans have been gripped by fear and panic yeah, over the reason for this lockdown. But you can be sure that in the days and weeks to come, that panic and fear will be replaced by another more demanding concern. Yeah, how to survive, how to put food on the table, how to keep their healthy families and healthy loved ones going. In my view, Almighty God has been talking very loudly to the world. Almighty God has been talking very loudly, especially to Kenyans. And the truth is, we have not been paying attention. Yeah, but I believe now, yeah, because human beings are stubborn, I believe now more and more people will start paying attention. And those who will pay attention will need to find out very quickly what is God saying? What is Almighty God saying to the country that he chose long time ago yeah, to be the place where a major end time revival will explode? Yeah, the country he chose to be a launching pad for this revival to the rest of the world. What is God saying in demanding our total attention yeah, in such an unprecedented manner? Folks, we need to urgently, very urgently, pay attention. Now is not the time to wait for those who pray to pray for you. Yeah, you don't need to wait for others. You yourself, individually, yeah, even if you've never prayed for a long time, <laughs> now you need to pray. Now, please don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to panic. We shall survive. Kenya will survive. I even suspect that the current crisis yeah, will not take too long. Yeah, it will soon be over. But we need to pay attention. Yeah, because even after this challenge, there will be another challenge in the horizon. Yeah. Because it is crystal clear that we are living in the end times. Now, I also think this is a good time to remind you, and indeed to refer you, to a video I made some months back on vertical sack farming. Yeah, you should be able to see a link on the top right hand corner of your screens right now. And although I don't think I have the capacity, yeah, out of my heart I'm feeling that I should offer free advice and free help as far as possible to anybody who is interested in this. Yeah, because I think <laughs> it has suddenly become very relevant in helping us yeah, with the challenges ahead. And so if you watch this video, ignore all the messages, yeah, advertising. For consultancy, help from me. Yeah, I will help free of charge. Because this is something I've done practically yeah, and it has really helped me. And so I'm not helping you with theories or things I've read somewhere. <laughs> I'm helping you with things I have done and I continue to do practically. And of course I don't expect everybody to be interested here. Yeah? But those who will be interested, those who will be able to see 
uh, this opportunity, I will happily help. But going forward, folks, we will need to adjust, to adjust to the new realities. And I urge you to avoid being negative. Yeah, always look on the bright side of things. Be positive. Because indeed, yeah, in this crisis, there are also huge opportunities. And I see some Kenyans coming out of this crisis very rich, much richer than they are now. But only because they will have chosen to focus on the positive. Yeah, because any fool can see the negative. Any idiot can focus on the negative and complain and complain, which will not help you. It will not help anybody. Yeah, but looking on the positive side <laughs> is a different ball game, And that is helpful and profitable. And for those of you who are still in shock and maybe overwhelmed by panic, yeah, I refer you to my immediate previous video, which I'm sure will really help. Yeah, and help you evaporate any fear that may want to engulf your life. All for a better Kenya. And I'm here yeah, to encourage, to help, to advise, to exchange ideas with you. Yeah, I'm right here for you. Even as we continue to dissect, digest, analyze, break down Kenyan politics as we always have. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.